concept of Miracles, okay. Well, Miracles as an album was mostly written during lockdown. And, I mean, the topics you know, vary from mortality to, you know, uh, relationship struggles, stepping outside of comfort zones. The means in which I wrote about those topics probably align with where I was in my life at that point. Essentially about that, yeah. Just a, I suppose, a, a call to action, a reminder, you know, for kids and adults to just hold on to that magic. I felt like if I had to pick a common theme for what I was feeling during the time of making the album, it was more about just reminding myself of, of all those everyday miracles that happen and especially coming on uh, out of the other side of COVID where I had to do a lot of work on myself. You know, every day I would wake up and hear bad news and I just have to make a, a point of reminding myself of not only are there these challenges going on, but there are also these amazingly incredible things that are happening every single day. When I widen that lens to include everything, that's when I feel the most grounded and also the, you know, a lot of the solutions to challenges seem to come. To me, I was actually in quite a, a, a creative space during COVID. Uh, once I accepted where we, where we were, disconnected from all the you know, the doom and gloom and the anticipation of what might happen, I I just actually was walking around in a pretty blissed out, you know, creative uh, yeah, bubble, really. I think probably the, the biggest difference writing this album compared to the last album is that I was probably leaning in a lot more to these topics and, and even just musically what I wanted to do. Uh, I was a lot more in tune with my creative intuition than what I was during the last one. Yeah, a lot of my influences are generally subconscious. I'm not really trying to copy anything. Um, but I was listening to Grizzly Bear, to Ry Kuda, um, David Bowie, to Lana Del Rey, Most Def, uh, Gang of Youths, Angus and Julia Stone, like JJ Kale. Uh, it really is a, a mix match. And I, I mean, I can kind of hear where I've, I've gone to those places. I'm not sure if it's necessarily obvious to uh, the listener. Hopefully it's not. <laughs> not too obvious. So uh, I write songs lots of different ways. Uh, I keep like a, a creative notepad where if I'm walking around doing my day-to-day -day thing and an idea pops into my head, uh, I've got a space to, to put it. Quite often I'll take some time later on in that day to just lose myself in the concept and then it's later on in the process that I start to you know create boundaries and, and sculpt it. Um, I do the same thing musically as well so if I come up with a riff idea a lot of this stuff might happen when I'm jamming on Twitch or you know noodling around the living room and I'll come up with an idea. I'll either beatbox it or play it on my guitar or sing it or whatever that you know musically comes to mind into my iPhone and then I've got this whole folder to draw on when I'm actually feeling like I want to build something. Yeah so the cover art I believe one of the most Common Miracles doesn't seem to get the attention that it deserves and at times as trivialized is childbirth. And I wouldn't have thought that before I had kids. That cover uh, was derived from a photo of when my first was born and it symbolizes the amazing unexplained miracle um, that is childbirth. But then it's also a time when we're, uh, especially the mother, is uh, is challenged in, in incredible ways. Uh, and I'm in awe of what my wife went through during that time. Uh, and if I was to sum it up, it's where love uh, completely outshines fear. You know, because at times you are dealing with death, really. Like, especially if you're in a, in a, in a, a tough spot. The way that it's coming into the world just full force is, is an incredible thing. And I feel like there was a lot of parallels between that experience and what I was personally going through and where I was in my life when I created Miracles as an album.
broken lines, I had a lot of traumatic experiences touring and that's what led me to take you know, a good four or five years off. I, I suppose I just got a little frustrated and went, you know, what can I do to remind myself of all the good that happens when you step outside of your comfort zone, when you get out on the road, like, and so I wrote a song about it and that's uh, Broken Lines and I feel like I wanted to keep it cool because that's how I want to feel when I'm on the road. <laughs> um, so my first single was Cool Changes. And that was a co-write with a friend of mine, Tommy Gunn. Uh, during COVID, uh, we were going for lots of surfs and the times that I'm just latching on and, and I'm clinging or I'm, I'm resisting is when it all goes bad. And it's like that when I, when I surf. Take what you want, babe. Yeah, Carencia was a word that I discovered by listening to Tara Brock's podcast. It, it originally comes from bullfighting and it's and obviously a terrible sport. It's a part of the arena that the bull marks out where it feels the most strong inside it goes within itself and it's almost like a place of refuge. Because of that, the most dangerous time to, to tease or, or attack a bull. Seeing it as a word um, was something special and inspired lots of ideas for a song. So I'm going in Carencia, when there's no one left to go Carencia, when your back's against the wall. Choosing my favourite tracks is like choosing my favourite kids. Um, it really depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> sometimes I feel like my oldest, sometimes I feel like my youngest. No, I shouldn't say that. Um, I feel like Miracles. Miracles, it just it triggers a feeling in me that I, I love to feel. But I also feel like uh, Gone to God over the last sort of year or two, I had been revisiting my childhood, which ironically I struggled with mortality later in life, but yet I was dealing with death when I was, when I was sick as a kid. And it didn't rattle me because I had this really magical belief of what happens, you know, after you die. When I'm going to God, tell me it'll be okay. I reached out to Andrew Sheps, who is, you know, he's mixed everybody from Lana Del Rey to Chili Peppers to Rival Sons, Kaleo, Adele. And I've always wanted an experience where I could send my mixes off to the guru for feedback. And I felt like there was a lot of serendipity there because I had ran into him three years before that, sitting on a boat. We got talking about my past, you know, in America. He realized that I was signed to Michael Jackson's label. And he asked me, had, you know, have you ever performed with him before? And I said, yeah, I, I had in once in New York and we got as far as the dress rehearsal and I was playing black and white and Michael was right next to me and he dropped to his knees and face planted the fold back speakers and was out cold and got taken away on a stretcher and, and the gig didn't happen and he goes, I was at that gig, I was the sound guy. I'm like, no way! And he's like, yep, and you were that little kid. And, uh, and we just had this wild moment, like in Lake Macquarie of all places as well. And uh, so we kept in touch. Uh, I mean, I've been releasing music for a long time and you think that you're gonna be all in control and cool as a cucumber when you're about to release something, but it all just goes out the window. Like, I think I just gotta embrace the chaos. I, I keep going back to the, the words of Paul Kelly when I went to a panel that he was talking at and he just said, you know, once you release the song, the song will do what it'll do and I really like that um, uh, that surrendered approach to releasing, you know, whilst there's all this energy and everything, I, I truly am okay with the song and the album doing whatever it's supposed to do, you know, and I kind of, I feel uh, a bit liberated now that it's kind of out of my hands. <laughs> Burning time, cause I can't stand still. I want a brand new thrill, shoot to kill. Paranoid, I'm gonna lose my mind. It's an off-edge ride, it's a sacrifice.